Hello everybody, my name is Dragline, and uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to do 8-bit bass wobbles. Um, <coughs> basically, we're just going to be taking 8-bit basses and leads and samples and wobbling them to create chipstep music, which is a combination of dubstep and chip tunes. If you're not familiar with chip tunes, then I don't know why you're watching this video, but uh, chip tunes are basically um, music that's made using the old retro sounds ripped uh, out of the old machines like the uh, NES, the uh, Commodore 64, the Atari, and so on. So, first off, I'm going to preview this uh, wobbled 8 bit bass line that I have. <laughs> And then now you're going to hear it with a, uh, a beat that I put to it. And I have these other percussions turned off because I just wanted to hear, what just wanted you to hear the beat and the, uh, the bass line. And uh, this is a simple project that I'm working on. And uh, the way we're going to be doing this is using the sampler in FL Studio uh, to, and its properties to wobble samples. Okay, so let's start off. The first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and insert a sampler. Now in the sampler, it's empty. We're going to be working with this sample called Elevator Action C2. Go ahead and drag it on in there. Now there's a problem here. Whenever I hit a note, it just simply plays the uh, the sample and then stops. We need the sample to be looped. So we're going to go ahead and right click here and go to edit. And it's going to put it into Edison. Now I've already trimmed the sample so it's fully loop loopable. If you hear it, it just plays over and over and over and it sounds smooth. Um, whatever sample that you're working with, uh, you're going to want to trim it and uh, zoom in, you know, to make sure you get your uh, waves lined up. So where one starts, another one ends. That way it's, you get that smooth sound. So we, we've already achieved that here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control A to select all. Then we're going to hit this button right here and then set loop right there. Now the loop is set. We're going to go ahead and drag it down into right here. By the way, this is the button that drags your sample to anywhere you want it. So now, whenever we hit a note, this is going to sustain. Which is exactly what we want it to do. Alright, so now to go to the wobble part. We're going to go to the instrument properties section right here by clicking that. And then we're going to make sure we hit cut. That's going to be our cutoff frequency. Now this is a low pass filter. Uh, there's a regular LP and a fast LP. I'm just going to use the fast LP. Uh, we're going to set the amount all the way up. That's going to activate the LFO. And then we're going to put our tack all the way down. And then we're going to hit the uh, tempo-based time button, which will sync it to our host, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, now here's what it sounds like. Now it's pretty slow, uh, so we can speed it up. This mod Y is the resonance. Um, I'm going to adjust it up. I like to have it right about there. I don't like to go past halfway because then it just starts sounding weird um, and not very 8 bit like. So we'll just keep it there. And now we're going to go ahead and. Put some note data in this empty pattern here using our new little wobble that we've set up. Uh, Two bars. So 
now if we go over here, we got two bars playing. Now what we'll do is we'll just play it and then we'll adjust the speed according to how we want it. That's pretty cool. So uh, once you get your wobble set or your your the time that you want it to, or your rate, um, it sounds pretty good. Now the only problem is it gets boring if your um, thing is wobbling at the same rate over and over and over. So what you can do is uh, do a couple of things. You can uh, right click this and you can create an automation clip or edit events and by doing that you can draw um, envelopes that will control the speed so your speed will vary uh, over the course of the song in your wobble uh, but uh, there's another way to do it and this is the way I like to do it um, because drawing out envelopes and all that stuff is kind of boring and sometimes it gets tedious and that is to go ahead and just create several instances of the um, wobble. Uh, you'll just start out with one and then you'll clone it and uh, then you'll adjust just the properties. Now notice in here, watch the, how the speeds change when I click on each different uh, wobble. So I have two different speeds going on here. I got this one, and then I got this one. And then these two are basically the same, and then these two are basically the same. And they're layered on top of each other. They, they each have a different sound. So, um... But they're each, but each one that is layered on top of each other is set to be the same speed. Um, and uh, there's a lot of creative stuff you can do here. And what I did was the reason why I later layered them on top of each other is to get a bigger sound. Um, and I also did a little bit of stereo panning to get a wider range. Um, so now if we just preview it and. <laughs> So now you hear what it sounds like, and uh, then we'll just hear it once more, all together with the beat. And basically that's how you do it. Um, and you can create a whole bunch of different ones. And you can use all sorts of different, um, all sorts of different samples to get what you're get what you're going for. So um, I'm going to do a second tutorial that's going to show some other uh, fun little things that you can do to get more interesting sounds, um, more dynamic ranges, and just to create more color and uh, uh, fun glitchy stuff to achieve a really awesome 8-bit chiptune slash chipstep song. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. And if you have any uh, questions, uh, let me know.